to the Mixercist. <laughs> Hey, hey, welcome to the Mixer Assist, everybody. We are live from the crypt again. How's it going, CW? Good, EB. What's going on with you, man? Hanging out. You know, I was going to take a nice uh, slow day today because I went, I got I got a, a booster. I got my, my, like, what is it? My Brazilian booster. And I was just going to yep. chill on, on the couch in case something happened. But uh, uh, I was okay. And it turns out we've got a new product that we just have to talk about. Like, today it just came out. Company mm -hmm. we like. The new old U17A compressor, rare German compressor, which they've modeled to perfection as they always do. I've been playing with this. Uh, how you? Uh, how, how, how did you find it? I liked it. I'll, I'll show you. I think when we, <clears throat> I'll always start with a drum loop. I really did not have much time with it, but I do want to show you <clears throat> when I do a control walkthrough what I liked and what I. Uh, I mostly liked it. Put it to you that way. It's, yeah. uh, you know, let me summarize this. It has got the control of a modern compressor, like let's say the e, the um, EL arouser or some of the, like not kind of like the Unisum that you, I know you love that one, but it does have things like a built-in clipper and a way to really seriously f adjust the side chain that makes this a lot more um, useful. And yet it still has that cool vintage vibe. But highly configurable so i think you're gonna like that so wait till we get into it you'd be glad you did oh yeah yeah i found the same thing it's just it's got that goo uh the old plugins have a certain sound to them that i don't hear in other plugins I, and i mm -hmm. i'm not sure what it is there's a complexity to the motion of the envelopes in their compressors that I, it reminds me of acoustica but it's, it's not like acoustica it's, it's different mm -hmm. Uh, there's, it's not like super fast compression. There, there there's more no. of a squish. I think the closest thing is maybe the Kush stuff. Does that make sense? It the does Kush make audio? sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, so we should we're going to be demoing that. But uh, what do we want to do? We want to do horror. We're going to talk about Pantera a little bit too. Sure. Uh, let's do that. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, well, first things first is uh, Pantera are threatening to reunite, and uh, that is <laughs> <laughs> when you sent me that. Yeah. You sent me that, and it was like mm -hmm. Phil Anselmo and uh, the bass player Rex are going to mm -hmm. reunite Pantera. They're going to look for a drummer and a guitar player. First on the list is supposedly Zach Wild. Wow, that's interesting because he was a big friend of Dimes. So uh, I had an article pulled up, and uh, and Rex the. Uh, the bass player said, yeah, well, we just mentioned Zach because he's a good buddy of ours and we, he's mm -hmm. probably not going to be the one, but we just wanted to get that out of the way. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and because he's stylistically different, maybe I think it was Phil that said, hey, he's stylistically different, which does make sense because Di uh, Dimebag Daryl was a huge uh, tremolo player, Wayne Bar. Mm -hmm player mm -hmm. and zach doesn't do that he does all those other tricks which are amazing but he doesn't do the same it's he has a different uh, style i'd yep. be thrilled to see what he did with it but mm -hmm. i don't know if they're gonna go for it interesting and i wonder if there weren't some family feuds i know and selmo and the um the abbott family were not especially dimes ex-wife were really not getting along for a long time so i don't know where that's at but i tell you what if they come and play i'll probably go see it yeah yeah same same i never unfortunately got to see them uh i was gonna go see damage plan i think uh, around the time mm. when uh, you know time bag uh passed and uh, never got to see them live there's yep. very few bands that i didn't get to see that i like i'm just like going oh man i'm so sad but that is uh one of, one them. of them yeah yeah i hear you i hear you and then uh i don't know what else we got rage against the machine who, who yeah uh, coming up that's gonna be awesome tuesday uh, yep tu tuesday yeah, and uh, and then we were going to talk horror movies, and because you know our last um, our last stream was just like two days ago, so I haven't watched anything in between. But what we did talk about was uh, scoring horror movies, and you, you yes. mentioned it. I didn't I didn't have the stuff ready last time, but this time I do. These are some movies that that I personally worked on: Spaceship mm -hmm. Terror. Uh, mm -hmm. Same same director Harry Chinsky. The Spaceship Terror was the first one of the two, and this was going back mm -hmm. a, a you know a little bit while ago. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe like eight years ago for Spaceship Terror, maybe four or five for the next one we did, which was Blood Demon Rising. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I just got to say these are these are a lot of fun. Uh, you know, I could talk a little bit about the uh, the process of putting them together at some point, but uh, right now they are both available on Tubi. 
Was Blood Demon Was Blood Demon Rising the one where uh, they go into a uh, almost like what do you call it like a haunted a haunted attraction? That's right. Yeah, it's a haunted right, amusement okay. park. Uh, it's haunted it. music park, but there's like a demon that's been re- risen from the demon world that's inhabited the amusement park and is uh, absolutely co-opting uh, the various uh, various employees and stuff. So it's an evil amusement park. So. <laughs> so I got to tell you, I was super impressed with these because I had no idea you had done these movies. You never mentioned it, so you brought it up one time. I'm like, I'm gonna watch those, and I did. So, gentlemen. And let's be honest, there there are probably very few females watching this live stream or replay. So let's be <laughs> let's be straight, gentlemen. You will enjoy these movies if you enjoy half naked women. Uh, you'll get a huge kick out of this because the director apparently has a penchant for them as well. So uh, yes. just don't turn these on while your better half or your uh, girlfriend are in the house because if they see you watching this, you're going to get the eye roll. You know which one <laughs> I mean. Eye roll material. It's that, yeah. eye roll material. It's yeah. the sort that they give you when you're being a child, because these are basically exploitation movies. However, your soundtracks—I just want to say—were fucking great. So, Whoa. especially in Blood Demon Rising, you had an opening bit where you're doing some piano riffage that just blew me away. You could tell yeah. there was an obvious nod to the Reanimator theme in one of them. I can't remember which one, but you kind of played on that. Um, that opening um the opening theme from reanimator a little bit but also i just thought it was incredible it was the best part of the whole movie are we watching some quite a bit of yeah there's quite a bit of uh reanimator in there i'm I'm glad you picked up up on that yeah uh, it definitely has it here we go nothing can save the first one as a film as a whole but this one i felt like the music was just spot on i thought it was so great well thanks man well a lot of it's um just pieced together you know pretty much played everything no orchestra involved although there are a lot of real instruments on it so not so much on this intro piece you're gonna hear i think i i I did it all in reaper a lot of contact instruments wow tons of them there it goes a Brian Usna film. <laughs> totally sounds like Reanimator. It's pretty fun. Yeah. <laughs> That's so good, man. So. Yeah. So let's go to you here. Yep. Music's still playing, but you're on screen now. Okay. Let's just pause um, it just uh watch these movies guys you're going to enjoy yeah. them i think that they're they're a cute you know little fun ride and you know what credits to the guy who made them uh he took a shot right i don't know yeah. if he's still making movies or what but i I've, yeah he is i think he went to do it he's he? doing documentaries yeah he did uh he was doing documentaries the last i, I heard uh the, i okay. think these are the two horror movies that he's done he would he did have another one that was uh, there's like about space aliens or something i don't know if if okay. they ended up uh you know being made or whatever well i'll uh, tell you what you'll enjoy the music and like kudos to all of you everyone who worked on it for making a movie man living the dream that's so cool so living the dream (laughs) guys check it out support support these fellas every every time you watch it eric gets like three cents or something yeah well yeah in theory right so in theory yeah but it was the love the love of doing it really more than anything no doubt (laughs) no doubt so we've got to talk some to you old now right yeah. yeah yeah so do you want me to do the walkthrough real quick and then i'll yeah, get out of the way you and you can show yeah. them what you've been doing yeah okay. let's do that so hopefully you can see my control there was it in frame everything looking good looking good man okay cool so i'm just looping a drum track basic logic drummer like i always do and let's have a let's put these controls back i don't know if there's a default here yeah so just to note there's a torque control which is a combination knee and ratio and your standard input output much like you would see on a 1176 but with so much more going on here the left side is a soft clipper built in which allows you to kind of control the amount of the effect plus the frequency at which it makes the most impact more on that in a moment 
There's a detector control that lets you switch from dual mono to stereo. No big deal there. Your standard attack and release, which work like the lower uh, the lower the setting, the shorter the attack and release. You'll find the, the fastest you can go is 0.5 milliseconds, which is not too bad. The release is 50 milliseconds, which is kind of long for a modern compressor, but surprisingly fast for an antique. Torque again is the ratio and uh, the knee combined. And then you've got a detector configuration here where you can choose. Would they say basically this would be high pass, all the way high pass? And this would be all the way low pass. So this lets you control where the detector is um, uh, the, or the kind of the slope or the, the shape of the detector curve. And then you can pick the, the center frequency which this is super super useful so let's try some of these controls on a really annoying drum loop here we go so the first thing we'll do is test out the soft clipper let's put it way down there we go oh, wow. so, so you hear it wherever you're putting totally stressing out so if you dial that low, you're going to distort the low end. You dial yes. it high, and then uh, the midst in between, right? Okay. Let's let's see if you can hear it on the high end, off versus on. So we'll go all the way off, and let's play and listen to the cymbals in the hi hat. So this is all the way on. Don't hear a ton of difference, but you hear the bass is starting to come in. You definitely hear now, that. Now notice you have. You have to have this almost all the way up to like five o'clock before it lets go of the bass. Listen to the bass. It's still being affected. Out. Back in. So even all the way up here, the bass is still impacted. So it's kind of cool. Let's leave it down here. Bring the density to about here. Now let's start driving it. Watch the meters. You'll see the compression kick in. definitely flattening it out and it's flattening it out in a really smooth way meaning it's more like an LA-2A than it is like an 1176 but it's lacking some of that inherent warmth maybe the default torque setting is at about 20% apparently that models the hardware authentically let's see what happens though if you start to play with the torque all right going from 20% let me get you some more output. Yeah. Nice. You can hear it starting to do a little more, right? Yeah. Off. That's neutral. That is definitely smoothing things out. But of course, if you want some real action, you always have to take a compressor and lower the attack. I really like around here for the attack and then for the release I want it almost at 50 now you hear what it's doing without and with starting to get a little dirtier and then of course you can play there's a mix knob which is awesome but you can play with let's choose the frequency here so let's go all the way down. Oh, I see. So that's a detector circuit then. That's a detector circuit. So I feel like if you set it to high pass, you're going to hear that the bass drum is more controlled. Mm -hmm. And if we back off a bit. Oh, yeah. I could Totally you hear. can hear that it gets more pushy and pillowy, right? But let's turn this frequency all the way up to, let's say, maybe where the snare would live. Fundamental for a snare is probably in the two, 200 somewhere. Yeah, depending on deep snare will be like 150. And then, and then yep. probably let's up see, from let's there, see really, what it the does. deep snare might be 110. Yep. Let's listen to the snare. get this off low pass all 
I feel like it's controlling the snare a little bit more when I bring the shape down here. Could be my imagination. But if we bring the frequency all the way up... Right, because if you go left of the zero, then you're doing a low pass, and if you right, it's a high pass. Is that how it works? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Low pass, if you go all the way, you have to click the um, this detent. It's not making a ton of difference, but it might if I bring up, let's see, let's see. I feel like I hear more of the snare here. And it's more controlled here. Agree? Yeah. That's nice That's spot. what they did in the, in the very high end, though. So, again, like the EL Arouser or some more modern compressors that allow you to change the, what the detector is looking at. By the way, if you're not sure what the detector is looking at, just hit the monitor button. It'll show you. Have a listen. That's what the detector is hearing. That's the full range signal. So, so that I would pull be this compressing down. everything... It would be compressing everything triggered Hello. by what you're hearing right now. Yeah. Right. Which so should that control would be the low end. the high end alone and compressing the low end in that, in that case. That's very so cool. Little, yeah. Not a lot of modern compressors do this. And like an LA-2A has got two knobs. And if you lose one of them, you can still use it. So a way more control than you would find on most modern compressors. And yet it still has that nice vintage vibe. When this thing is diming, when it's really crunching, you can totally hear. Let me get the emphasis off that bass drum. Let's drive the input. Let's max out the torque a little more. Let's get the a fast um, attack and release. Let's skip the detectors. Let's just null those out to zero. And let's hear what this does, right? Without, that's just plain. Kick it in. Nice and pillowy. It really is. That's a lot of compression. It's awesome. Yep. So that's what I was, when I was playing it with it this morning, this is what I kind of discovered about it. So I kind of like this because without using an 1176 or an 1176 clone this has got a unique kind of sound i really dig what the clipper does i would actually really love this i want to hear what it would do on a hip-hop like an 808 because i think it could really add some uh a little bit of grit to it right 808s are hard to compress because the envelopes are not as fierce as a regular drum kit mm. so you find that you need either some kind of saturation or something to put ahead of it this having a clipper built in could save you a step that's it, man. Yeah, it's just like a, like the, the because the clippers first, you're going to take care of the really high peaks before it even gets into the compressor circuit. So that compressor is not exactly. going to work as hard. So I found a nice balancing act between that, right? So the first thing I would do is like try to control the peaks a bit, and mm -hmm. then get that level and out of the compressor and the character out of it. And I'm like awesome. I agree. So what did you come up with? Well, let's uh, let's see what we got here. The, uh, I got a song here with a bit of mixing going on. Uh, let's see if it uh, if it works. <laughs> this is an instrumental, but I got some the old stuff all over all of it, so. What do I got here? So you got the kick drum has it on there. The bass, sorry, this is, what am I doing here? Ah, wrong order. So drums have, the kick's got it. The bass. And the bass is interesting too because I actually use the side chain function. You can hear mm -hmm. them kind of hear modulating with where the kick would be. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look at that too. Yeah, that's it. 
There we go. Yeah, see this keyhole thing right here, that's your side chain. So if you set mm -hmm. up your DAW to do side chaining, you can really, uh, let me, uh, yeah, you can really hear it pumping, right? Because if yep. you take it off, that's kind of nice too, with the low end. You can clean it up a little bit this way, I find. And you can make the bass seem a bit louder. Like it gives you a little bit more room. Let's go back to the bass well, as soon as we were there. And now he finds the kick drum. Okay. I, th I think this is just all out of order here, was my problem. <laughs> <laughs> let's go back to this bass and he let's hear what this is doing, what I, what I did on it here. It's pretty level matched, so you'll have to listen carefully. There's the pumping. Now let's say we took that off. We just really dug in. Like that's a lot of, a lot of compression, right? And that's Ooh, the available gain if you want, mm -hmm. but obviously it has its own distortion too, so that wasn't quite necessary, but. So it actually gets, you know, it's compressing so much that it gets quieter. And I think where you notice that is on the end of a note. Like, listen to the very bottom end. Yeah. Hear that sub just come mm. right up there, right? And where's, see if you have it off. Like, it's there. But you turn it on. So you know, mm. It just brings that... Uh, that bottom end way way up right and that's i like that yeah um so what, what else is it on it's on some uh some guitars okay, let's get us into the picture here too shall we actually let's not because that's not ready <laughs> let's just keep on my screen here <laughs> let's not mess with what's working <laughs> it's that kind of day right i have my shot it's starting to kick in i'm feeling a little weird i gotta say a little bit Okay, we got some guitars here. And here I used also the Neo, where did it go? There we go. Let me bypass it. It's actually a little louder bypassed. Here's where I did add a bit of that distortion, and I really tuned it in onto the attack of the guitarist. So let me, right? Let's see if this. You don't want that, right? Up here where the attack is. That would be a nice place where it would sit in the mix. Obviously, not that much though. Well, you can get away with a bit. And the other thing, the attack, it can actually leave a, quite a bit of attack on guitars. Kind of yeah, I know. A nice, yeah. a nice motion. Agreed. Now the torque is um, the torque is a uh, it affects the knee, right? So you get a harder mm -hmm. knee and the ratio too. I think so. It's two and one. It does both. Yeah. Maybe you don't notice it as much on guitar. The other thing that's important here too to note is that I unlink them. They're not stereo links, so. Oh, interesting. So you really get into some stereo, hmm. stereo compression. They're linked right now. Listen to the stereo field. I'll give it more volume. Unlinked. So it just sort of widens it out, gives them, makes them more independent from each other. So I thought mm -hmm. that that's you know kind of important uh, not to link your stereo guitar bus, uh, especially if one comes in and the other one's not in. If you're doing that left-right trick, you don't you know necessarily mm -hmm. want it. You know the whole thing shifting around a lot. Uh, dry and wet, all the way wet. Although mm -hmm. this mix knob does allow you to do parallel uh, compression if yep. you want. What else? I did use one of the other Neolds on here, too, I think, on something. If you remember this, no, it wasn't that. Where? I still I, I still love that uh, 
the, the 73 acoustic, <clears throat> compressor acoustic. or the the uh, big owl the distorter what did i have the big owl oh yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> so what is what's <laughs> it on oh you know what it is? it's it's doing a it's doing a high-end boost on the overheads got it so take this off Nice. That's nice, you know, in the in the mm-hmm. mix. Off. On. Well, it just gives you some room on the cymbals there. I think, you know, all of the new old stuff really is great. They've got the uh the first one was another kind of channel strip. It was like the U seventy six, I think, channel strip or whatever that was. The preamp. It's just a preamp yeah. with a couple of filters and yeah. And I, think a it had, I think it, it had a, like a peak in the. You could choose three K and ten K or something like that. It was, yeah. but they were nice, very useful. Yeah, but it nice had a pre- compressor like built into with that one. I think. Uh, then there Did was it? this one, yeah, and this one, which is the I think so, and this one, which is the distortion, which is uh, let me get that up here actually. Mm-mm-mm. There we go. Uh, so yeah, th- uh, this one's the distortion. They came up with another one that I don't have called Warble, which is sort of a tape emulator, but you can push it to yep. the extreme and get damage out of it, and, uh, and that's pretty fun. But of course, we are here to talk about the new guy, the the U17, which is uh, amazing. I mean, I, I I tried it on some vocals, which I don't have ready. I tried it on some piano, which uh, is, that's for another project. I couldn't play it on here, but uh, it does uh, it does a good job. It really. Um, I bet you it'd be unique. fun on on lower settings on like a double bass or an acoustic guitar, piano, and then the more aggressive stuff with the clipper. You could really you could really make some synth stuff sound different with it. I felt well, it's a lot of synth stuff doesn't need a ton of control but it really wants a compressor to kind of mangle it and torture it a bit. I thought it might be cool on that. That'd be a fun thing to try it on. Oh, yeah. Your mother's in here with us, Karis. Would you like to leave a message? I'll see that she gets it. That's right. <laughs> They're back, man. They're back. They're we, need more, we need more new They're, ones. We need some new ones. Are, we do, man. <laughs> <laughs> there it is again. Would you like to leave a message? I'll see that she gets it. <laughs> Twice is always nice. Yeah. Well, I dig it. <laughs> I'm still learning all these controls, man. You know what? I'll show you what so I So, look, you know. I th- here's what I think. I think if you don't already have something with a lot of um, built-in, like, clipper management, but also something that allows you to tweak the detector circuit, aside from the standard roll-off, like almost most compressors will have some kind of high pass filter at 80 or a variable knob but not a lot of them let you choose a center frequency and how much or how little i think the arouser probably does that best but i thought this makes it a nice addition to a classic analog compressor design you rarely see both in the same plug-in so i thought that was cool and i thought the compression characteristic was was nice it it may not be my favorite ever but if you don't have something that does dirt well I think you'll like like the 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 fact that they've modeled it off a, a hybrid tube transformer model is pretty obvious. This thing was meant to crank, and uh, when you dime it, it sounds really good. Really good, man. Uh, just like you said with the uh, detector circuit, not that often that you can just take your high end out of the uh, chain and leave all your high end alone. I mean, I know that some of the modern EQs they'll give you a whole EQ interface and you can EQ the, the detector however you like but uh, vintage emulations don't usually give you that kind of control right so I'm I saying can think of like a couple I can think of maybe like 1178 from Pulsar uh, oh good they, point that another great that. plug that's yeah. a good one um, but yeah. I don't think I can't think of too many right like usually nope. if with most emulations you're gonna have to do some kind of side chain trick to make something like that work but that's all built in here and of course you can do the external side chain so nice nice yeah my thought on on vintage style compressors is if you don't want the dirt and the character of the way that it distorts and flubs out when it's doing its thing because specifically it's not fast right if you don't like that sound then just use your stock compressor in your daw you if you buy this and turn the torque all the way down to 20 or 10 percent you're missing out on half of what it does gloriously which is really choke a signal when you uh push into the controls a little bit i was i was pretty impressed with that part of it for sure (laughs) 
There's nothing else to say. There's nothing else you can say after that. <laughs> oh, we've got plenty of these. Now. <laughs> the, trick, the trick is putting them in at the right time, right? When do you stick them in? Like, a, you know, and how do you know it's coming, right? Because this is all live now, right? It's like exactly. We just, we exactly. just have to get rude. We got to get so, loud and proud with this stuff. <laughs> I agree. I agree. We got to make more. Okay. Yeah. Is that uh, is that have we said everything we need to say? Do you think? I think so. Yeah, I think we're pretty much there, man. Like, um, very happy, ready to sign off with that. We talked about some movies. We talked about some Pantera. We went through this fantastic yeah. new plug on the day of being live enables us to do that, of course. And uh, I'm pretty uh, satisfied with that, man. Me too. Me too. So thanks, guys, for watching. And we'll see you on the next one. Congratulations yeah, to the um, the new old guys. I know some people like to pronounce it new old, but I think it's new old. Oh, that's what I call it. Congrats to the Neil guys on a great new product. This is cool. I hope it does really well for you. um, uh, They just keep seem to get better. They have left threads, uh, very extensive threads on the forums about how they do the modeling, and they they they're not hiding anything. They're just showing exactly the techniques that they use and the kind of math that they use. And you're gonna read it, and you go, I don't I don't know what that is, but it sounds cool, right? Yes, it does. And uh, (laughs) yeah, I think their their emulations are tops for this kind of algorithmic. uh, Nonlinear emulation that they're doing, uh, the way they're solving equations, it, it doesn't use a lot of CPU. It sounds fantastic, and you know it when you get those plugins that that, that go that extra mile with the modeling. You can hear it, and uh, this is no uh, no exception to that to the whole lineage Agreed. of all, all of their plugins. Frankly, so great job. I agree, Very and I happy. love algorithmic compressors. By the way, over modeled compressors or sampled compressors, because I think yeah, I'm sorry, I should have said over sampled compressors because I think they behave more like the real deal. Mm-hmm. Um, so I actually like, you know, I would always reach for something with a smaller footprint, lower CPU, because you want to be able to use this on multiple tracks and not have to worry about it gassing out. So yeah. uh, it's a, kind of a dream plugin. And right now, I think it's around 100 bucks US. Yeah, not bad, but you can do, uh, I've been, and actually, I, I should ask you while, while we're here, because they have that new plan, re- relatively new plan from Plugin Alliance called the Bio One for $29 every mm-hmm. month. So mm-hmm. when you subscribe, you give them twenty nine ninety nine, and then mm-hmm. every month you get to pick one plugin Ooh. for a dollar. Cool. So you get every month you get one of their, and they don't put the black. They don't make a blacklist. So it could be the brand, the brand new one that just came out, and you get at least one for thirty bucks. If you want to sign up twice and start two of these uh, voucher programs, you can do it. Sixty bucks a month for two plugins. But I, I'm starting to think about that because to get this for, I haven't, we, we haven't bought this one yet and we don't want to get in trouble for saying, oh, this is amazing. Well, why didn't you guys buy it? Well, we, we did. We bought it. Well, that was the last one we did. I'm yeah. just uh, clearing that one off that, yeah, we bought it like I knew we knew we were and we bought it like that night. So that now PA been. has such a great loyalty program that I ended up buying probably more than half of their entire catalog. Like I have yeah. everything. And to be honest, this is probably the first really, really good compressor they've made. You know, they were some of the channel strip ones were okay. Mm-hmm. There was the Acme Opticom, which was okay. This like one that? is really a lot more compelling. But I had like to me their SPL twin tube model is probably one of the best tube emulators or saturators yep. that I have. It's just purple really seventy seven while we're on their compressors. Mm. Purple seventy seven, not I bad. Forgot. So, uh, I forgot Shadow, about that one. Shadow Hills. Excellent. I forgot about that one. Okay, uh, I'll leave my words. Got some good compressors. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about some of the early ones back in the day because I had bought yeah. all of their, um, what do you call them, their channel strip emulations. So they had yeah. some SSL ones. They had a Neve one. And they were those ones were okay. But it wasn't, I guess it's more like in the past two, three years, they started creating really great stuff. Shadow Hills, they made for UAD, and it wasn't available natively That's right. until maybe two, three years ago, I would say. So it was around then they started releasing some more groovy stuff. And their guitar sims are just out of this world, too. Yeah. And they, so they, they do make good these, stuff, but I already uh, own most of it. Well, I own probably, like you said, I probably own about 60% of it, maybe even 75 But yeah, yep. I've been picking up, the, uh, they do the external sales. So they had an external mm-hmm. sale on the ERS-250 reverb from, uh, yeah. is that from mm-hmm. DDMF? Uh, oh, Could uh, be. Uh, Empty Room, actually. Empty Room Systems, that's who, who made that. That's a great one. They just had Native, native Instruments. This, the one that SoftTube made for Native Instruments, which is the their Lexicon 480, the RC48 oh, wow. that was on sale nice. for like 30 bucks external for 48 hours or something I picked that up amazing That's plan cool. and uh, yeah uh, plug in alliance good stuff uh, get involved of course the 
they do have subscriptions too if you enjoy doing that i don't enjoy subscriptions nor do i nor do i i prefer to own them i probably end up spending more money than if i just done the subscriptions at this point though i don't i haven't done the math on that but now if you made a subscription that was like a 10 slot lending library where i could use some plugins because with me mm -hmm. i'll use pro plugins and i'll say this is on every chain i love this i'm going to use then i'll get bored of it or something better will come out and i want to return it and grab a different one so kind of like the kindle unlimited model where it's like you can have 10 at a time for a certain price every month that i would go for but to have their whole library a significant chunk of it means i'm spending money on things i already own so this idea of a $29 a month it's kind of like book of the month club you pay your fee you pick which book you want and we'll send it to you that makes a little more sense I kind of like that yeah I, I, I like uh, options you know they uh, we've always had the option to buy we had vouchers the vouchers go up and down depending on how much and you never you're not quite sure when you're gonna get a voucher and if it's gonna coincide with the latest release or with a big sale or whatever but that's right uh, the the uh, the twenty nine club the twenty nine ninety nine club that that feels like it gives you some kind of control over vouchers it's it's interesting I agree right? like I agree so uh, yeah so they no shortage of options I think they're they're trying a whole bunch of different sales sales models for whatever people like because people like different things but uh, I'm really happy man so let's do Me another too. do you want to do another snippet or let's no let's just go uh, but yeah let, let's so let's call it for tonight here's and, the control uh, panel this is this late. is where where it all happens there. Oh, Here beautiful. We go. We've got the one at the bottom, which is like the bye-bye. Mm -hmm. When I hit this, the stream will stop, and you'll get the uh, the end credits. It's all programmed in there. <laughs> Look at Courtesy this. see a VMix, you know? There we go. It's going to be out beautiful. of focus. But, uh, so there's that. I have the joystick, so I'm always bumping my microphone. I'm looking over here. I'm looking over there. It's a there. technical marvel. It's like a yeah. mini broadcast studio in your basement. It is. It is, and uh, you know, you can go as far as you, uh, you know, software like this. Like they, they run sports stations. They, they can do. You can do a newscast or like a sports cast with stuff like this. Hundred percent. You know, if you get into it enough, though, because it's just a learning curve. But uh, yeah, very cool. Um, Vmix, that is, by the way. Uh, I'll put that in the link. In the link, I'll put Tubi, uh, Tubi uh, links so you can watch those two mm -hmm. movies. Should you dare? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. link to the Pantera article that just came out mm -hmm. in that news. Uh, the links, of course, to the uh, U17 compressor from the old, which we've been talking about a bit anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, and and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll try to come at you live. Maybe we'll bring our cell phones and we'll try to come at you live on the way to the, uh, you know, on the road trip to see Rage Against the Machine and we'll bring you some uh, concert footage too if we can. That would be pretty sick. And I think we can make it happen. So I think so too. Yeah. Maybe without all the fancy, uh, you know, screaming and stuff, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it makes you laugh. You know, got to have some fun with it, right, man? Yes, so, you're right. You're right. So make sure you like, make sure you subscribe. If you're, if you're still watching, then I don't know what's wrong with you, but. <laughs> yeah, if you have any, you, you, you tell your friends if yeah. you have any. So we're going to hit the, the, the great reset button right here. You ready? Yeah, See I'm you guys ready. next time on the mix. Peace out. Three, two, one, fire. <laughs>